After Booster 18's pressure incident at the Massey site, everyone expected SpaceX's packed 2025 schedule to collapse. Instead, SpaceX just filed with the FCC for Flight 12, and the document reveals a launch window starting January 23, 2026. How did they recover this fast? Even more surprising, they're confirming Booster 19 will be stacked in December, keeping the Q1 2026 target alive despite the explosion. What's SpaceX doing differently that lets them bounce back when others would spend months investigating? The FCC filing tells us more than SpaceX probably intended to reveal. On November 24, 2025, they requested special temporary authority to use radio frequencies for Flight 12, covering an operational window from January 23rd to June 28th, 2026. This isn't just paperwork. The filing confirms Flight 12 will be the first test of the Starship Block 3 design, and despite Starlink streaming gorgeous HD footage since Flight 5, SpaceX still needs traditional S-band and X-band frequencies for critical telemetry. Why does a company with the world's most advanced satellite network still rely on decades-old communication technology? The answer reveals something most people miss about spaceflight regulations. Even though Starlink cameras can broadcast live video to millions of viewers, agencies like the U.S. Air Force and NASA require traditional communication bands for velocity data, pressure readings, temperature monitoring, and engine status. It's not about technology. It's about legal requirements and safety protocols that haven't caught up with innovation. SpaceX can't use Starlink as the primary channel for critical flight data, no matter how capable the system is. The filing mentions both stages could either return to the launch site or perform water landings, but a splashdown is more likely for this mission. Flight 12 marks the very first test run of the V3 design, and SpaceX needs plenty of margin to safely evaluate all the new upgrades while reducing recovery risk. When you're testing a completely redesigned rocket with 33 brand new Raptor 3 engines, you don't take unnecessary chances on the first flight. Would you bet billions of dollars on catching a booster you've never flown before? SpaceX also submitted a space transfer authorization request to the FAA, and the timeline matches perfectly with the FCC filing. This allows the FAA to schedule and reroute commercial flights around that window before SpaceX gets official clearance. Without this approval, the flight simply cannot happen because Starship directly affects international aviation safety. So why request a six-month authorization window when they're targeting January? The answer shows how experienced SpaceX has become at navigating bureaucracy. If they only requested authorization through March and something happened in February, like a booster, exploding during static fire, the FAA would immediately pause everything for investigation. The launch would slip to May, the authorization would expire, and SpaceX would have to file again and wait all over. Filing for six months up front saves them from multiple approval cycles. Based on VP of launch Kiko Donchev's earlier comments, the target is still January 2026. Even after the B-18 explosion, the schedule only slipped by about two months at most. SpaceX confirmed Booster 19 is being fast-tracked, and we're already in late November. Finishing the vehicle might take at most three months, stacking the remaining sections, running cryo tests, installing the grid fins, mounting the engines, and completing a static fire. If everything holds, Booster 19 will be ready to fly by late February or early March 2026. This brings us to what makes Flight 12 truly groundbreaking. We'll witness the first liftoff from Launch Pad 2, the first flight of Starship Version 3, and the first time we see the powerful Raptor 3 engines in action. If you remember the excitement of Starship Flight 1, Flight 12 operates on a completely different level of complexity and capability.
The V3 booster introduces transformative upgrades. The three grid fin system replaces the four fins used in previous versions, reducing weight by 10 to 15 percent while optimizing for higher angle of attack during the glide back phase. The new grid fins are 50 percent larger and mounted inside the methane tank compartment, improving stability and preparing the booster for catching with the chopsticks on the launch tower. All 33 Raptor 3 engines deliver 20% more thrust at 280 tons per engine with lighter dry mass and fewer thermal shields. The booster itself stands 1.5 meters taller, increasing fuel capacity by 25%. The redesigned fuel transfer tube channels cryogenic propellant efficiently to all 33 engines with vacuum-jacketed insulation expected to save 10 to 15 percent of fuel while enabling faster flip maneuvers. These aren't minor tweaks. These are fundamental redesigns that determine whether SpaceX can achieve true, rapid reusability. Ship 39 carries equally critical objectives. It needs to prove the V3 design can reach low Earth orbit and maintain orbit long enough to test re-entry with new heat shield tiles. The tail has shed most thermal protection thanks to cooler Raptor 3 engines. A key goal is relighting Raptor engines in space, building on Raptor 2's success to demonstrate maneuvering and prepare for in-orbit propellant transfer, planned for full testing in summer 2026. The ship also integrates docking ports and quick disconnects for refueling, moving toward lunar landing capability. How much rides on this single test flight when the entire Artemis program timeline depends on these technologies working? Flight 12 doesn't just validate V3 reliability. It establishes whether Starship can become a truly versatile vehicle capable of 100-plus flights per year. This matters because SpaceX isn't just managing Starbase operations. While dealing with the B-18 aftermath, Upgrading Launchpad 1 and finishing Launchpad 2 in Texas, thousands of tasks await in Florida. Completing the Starship pad at LC-39A, finishing two more at SLC-37B, and constructing Gigabay production facilities. Colonel Brian L. Chapman, commander of Space Launch Delta 45, recently revealed the Florida timeline during a media discussion. Early to mid next year is when we anticipate Starship coming out here to be able to launch, he confirmed, adding that KSC is leading the partnership to support Starship at LC-39A. This means sometime between January and June 2026, SpaceX could make Starship's first flight from Florida. In early November, SpaceX installed the OOSM onto the Flame Trench system at LC-39A, meaning most heavy construction is complete and the pad should be operational early next year. Once active, SpaceX will conduct up to 44 launches per year from LC-39A alone, as approved by the FAA in August 2025. This intense schedule drew strong opposition from Blue Origin and ULA, who argued SpaceX's pace could force them to repeatedly evacuate personnel from their own pads for safety. Their attempts to slow SpaceX down failed, largely thanks to Colonel Chapman's support. There's no better time to be present at the Space Coast than right now, Chapman said. We're breaking records for launch frequency gaining orbital capability essential for national security, and doing it at a strategically challenging time. The concerns from competitors stem from real operational challenges. Starship generates nearly 17 million pounds of thrust at liftoff, and each flight produces three moments of roaring Raptor engines. Safety zones are significantly larger than those for Falcon 9, but here's the crucial detail competitors fear most. Chapman explained that current blast damage assessments treat LOX methane as equivalent to 100% TNT in terms of blast radius. Since Blue Origin's New Glenn and ULE's Vulcan also use LOX methane systems, limiting launches only for SpaceX wouldn't be fair. 
If SpaceX flies more often, it demonstrates superior launch capability, and more flights benefit national security interests. Chapman has consistently supported SpaceX for this reason, noting that blast damage assessments will gradually decrease as testing proves safety margins. SpaceX's COO, Gwyn Shotwell, has explained that even though Falcon 9 flies over 100 missions yearly, it will eventually be replaced by Starship for satellite launches. Starship is cheaper, carries far more satellites, and is at least three times more efficient. For competitors, this represents an existential threat, creating fears that SpaceX could establish a 20-year technological and market advantage. The 120 launch target remains aspirational. Currently, only LC-39A has approval for 44 launches annually. The two pads at SLC-37B are proposed for up to 76 Starship launches per year, but remain under EIS review by the U.S. Space Force. Construction started in June 2025, so the pads are expected operational around 2027. This creates an immediate logistics challenge. Florida doesn't have a star factory or megabase like Starbase Texas, so SpaceX is constructing a massive gigabay at Roberts Road, about 8 miles from LC-39A and 9 miles from SLC-37B. This single manufacturing hub will supply vehicles to both launch complexes. The gigabay represents extraordinary scale, over 757,000 square feet of floor space, reaching 380 feet tall with 24 giant assembly ports. When operational in late 2026 or early 2027, the facility is designed for extreme production rates, one super heavy booster every five to seven days and one Starship upper stage every seven to 10 days. That's a theoretical output of 50 to 70 full Starship Super Heavy pairs annually from Florida alone. Until Gigabay reaches capacity, SpaceX will ship all vehicles from Starbase, Texas to Florida by sea using new generation heavy barges. The stages will cross the Gulf of Mexico and arrive at Port Canaveral just kilometers from LC-39A. With two massive barges on order for delivery in late 2025 to early 2026, SpaceX can establish routine maritime operations. Throughout 2026 and into early 2027, every East Coast Starship mission will begin with an ocean voyage from Texas. Only when Gigabay reaches full manufacturing capacity will Florida-built Starships take flight from LC-39A. This is what separates SpaceX from everyone else in the aerospace industry. After Booster 18's explosion, most companies would spend six months investigating, filing reports, and reorganizing their entire program. SpaceX spent less than a week before confirming they're still targeting Q1 2026 for Flight 12. That's not recklessness. That's the result of building redundancy into every level of operations. They already had Booster 19 ready to step in. They already had contingency plans for hardware failures. And they've already trained their teams to move forward under pressure. Flight 12 represents far more than just another test flight. It's the first flight of Block 3, the first mission from Launch Pad 2, and the first real demonstration of whether Starship can scale to 100 plus flights per year. If these upgrades work, the three grid fin system, the Raptor 3 engines, the increased fuel capacity, then SpaceX moves one step closer to making space transportation routine instead of extraordinary. Looking ahead to 2030, the vision becomes clearer. Five Starship pads operating simultaneously in Texas and Florida, boosters landing and relaunching within hours, orbital refueling becoming standard procedure, and Artemis bases powered by megawatts of solar energy on the lunar surface. SpaceX isn't just building rockets anymore. They're constructing the infrastructure for an interplanetary civilization, 
and Flight 12 is where that infrastructure gets stress-tested under real conditions. So, will SpaceX pull this off? Will Flight 12 launch in January as planned, or will another setback push the schedule further? Drop your prediction in the comments. If you want to stay updated on every development as we approach Flight 12, hit that like button, subscribe to Atlas Space, and turn on notifications. We'll be covering every static fire, every stacking operation, and every regulatory filing until Starship Block 3 lifts off. Thanks for watching.